We're at 1 Samuel 12, verse 13 through 15. Let's read it out. Now, therefore, here is the king whom you have chosen and whom you have desired. And take note, the Lord has set a king over you. If you fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and do not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then both you and the king who reigns over you will continue following the Lord your God. However, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you as it was against your fathers. Now there's something very interesting here that most people miss. Did you pay attention? Did you notice? Did you hear what it was? God is making a promise. This is kind of one of those covenant arrangements here. You know, if you do this, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. So do this. That's what's going on here. But I want you to notice the very important piece here. Again, at verse 14, if you, you the people, if you fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and do not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then both you and the king who reigns over you will continue following the Lord your God. Okay, did you understand that? If the people are obedient, people on the broader group size are obedient to God, then their leaders will be obedient. See? But then we heard part two, right? 15. If, however, you do not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then the hand will be against you as it was against your fathers. Do you see what's going on here? We often blame our leaders, don't we? It's the president's fault. It's the conference president's fault. It's the president of the United States' fault. It's president whoever's fault. We have bad leaders. If we could just dump these leaders and get the right leaders, hey, we're all going to live happily ever after, you know, kumbaya. But what do we see here? It's the broad-scale obedience of the people or disobedience of the followers of God. If the people are obedient, their king will be obedient, things will go well. If the people are disobedient, then things are all going to go south very quickly. So instead of looking, you know, and you can have problematic leaders, certainly so. But notice that in this story, we learn something really quite important, that whenever we condemn our leaders, there, there we are actually condemning ourselves. We haven't been faithful. When we have bad leaders, it's because before we had the bad leaders, we the people were not right with God. This is a big one. Read it again. See if you don't agree. A lesson for us. Let's make sure that our hearts are right and all the other pieces will come into place. Why don't we pray together for this thing? Dear Father in heaven, many times we have looked at other people as the problem, and yet we see here that you are calling us to accountability, your people on the broader scale. Help us to be right. Help your church to be right. Help us to be seeking you, and then we know that you'll provide leaders that will also be on your side. But if we have issues in the leadership, it's almost certainly because, Lord, there are issues in our hearts. Help us to return to you, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, some of us have a little bit of returning to do. Some of us have some self-inventory to do. Some of us, when we look at the troubles we have among our leaders, some of us need to look into our own hearts and say, Oh God, give me the gift of repentance. And let's, please, Lord, change me so things can actually come into the right way. And I believe God will do that for us. God be with you today.